Where are you from originally? I'm from Los Angeles. Ah, okay. So how long were you there before you made the trek, I guess, to, uh, or do you live in New York? Where do you live now? I live in New York now. When did you uh, move to New York? I, um, I moved to New York just about two years ago. I was, uh, I'm from, I grew up in Los Angeles, but I started uh, stand-up in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for about four or five years, and then I was in L.A. for about two and a half, three years, and then I've been in New York for the last two years. And what uh, what caused the change of location? <clears throat> Which time? <laughs> or I mean, when you when you moved to, I guess now that you're in New York, was there just a reason to move to New York? Where you're like, this is where I should be now? Yeah, I um I tried pitching something, and people didn't seem to pay attention to me. It seemed like the way you pitch something is where people are more into buying something if you're famous already, mm -hmm. some kind of a heat or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured maybe if I got a little heat with stand up, people might pay a little more attention to my pitches and they might listen when I try and sell them a show idea or something like that. I see. How old were you when you started stand-up? <clears throat> I was 21. Okay. Now, I notice most of your uh, material is very sex-related. Yeah, some of it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does that, how does that go with most audiences? It just seems like a... Uh, it's, it's almost cringe-worthy, I would say. It's, it's good stuff and you don't hear that from everybody, so... Oh, thanks. Well, you know, I think um, Doug Stanhope once said that, uh, you know, whatever you say about dirty comedy, it's not easy. People say it's easy, and it's actually not that easy. So, you know, when I try and write a dirty joke, I try and make it, um, you know, like uh, thought-provoking or interesting and not just dirty to be for dirtiness' sake. So, uh, I don't know, it, you know, and the, the reason it's not easy is because audiences aren't into it. I mean, if they're disgusted, they're not going to laugh. You know, they're yeah. close to they're not going to be into it. So you have to perform it in a way and write good enough jokes that they'll they'll dig it still. So mm -hmm. yeah, and it's also it's also just I mean it'd be a lot easier if I didn't like that kind of humor, but I do. It's my favorite shit, and uh, and it's it's what I it's not it's, I'm good at writing it, and it's what makes me laugh. So have there been shows where the audiences have been put off, or like I can't believe you said that? Sure, I'll, I mean not not really put off. I mean I wouldn't be doing the jokes if they didn't work. You know. Mm -hmm. I do have a large enough repertoire. Repertoire. How do I say that? I have a, enough jokes now that uh, I can do. I can do a lot of clean material and then kind of ease into the dirty stuff. Or, you know, the more um, I, the more time I've been doing it, you know, if, if I need to adapt to a certain audience, I can pull out a line here and a line there, and I maybe you know, I don't do the parts. I can I can do the whole bit without the most hardcore part. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, who are the comics who I guess influenced you during the process? Um, I guess my favorites are probably um, uh, David Tell, Doug Stanhope, and Mark Maron. Those are my those are my three favorites, I guess. Okay. And Luke's, yeah, CK and Rock, I guess. Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy, of course. That's a good group. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed you had a, a video called "Louis Katz Discusses Marriage with a Lady." Yeah, that's a nice. She's a nice lady. She is. Who is that, and why isn't the video longer? Oh uh, well. <laughs> Well, you can see her online. I don't know if she. Uh, you can you can see her. She's a she's one of the original Suicide Girls. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can see her on that website. Oh uh, really? But, yeah, yeah. Because right, uh, I've heard of that. I had somebody who was trying to set somebody up with a woman, and they're like, "You should go on this website because they have girls like that." <laughs> yeah, if you're into tats and fucked up looking chicks, or but hot, like like you know, tough looking. I don't know if they're tough. You know, just just catty and. <laughs> You know, piercings and shit like that. She uh, she seemed nice on camera. That's all. I yeah, yeah. I mean, from behind, yeah, she's nice up front in the front too. Uh, <laughs> she was a real nice lady, and yeah, she's a that that was shot with a bunch a couple other sh shorts that I wrote in um, Portland. So the other two, I'm in a rose garden because it is the Rose City, Portland, Oregon, and this one is also the um, has the most strip clubs per capita of any city in America. So I thought I would make it very Portland-esque and bring one of the strippers in into the video. You'd probably have you performed in strip clubs? I mean, obviously as a stand-up as opposed to a dancer, but have you um, done shows like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually haven't. You know, I'd love to. It's kind of you know, it's where stand-up started way back in the day. You know, Lenny Bruce would perform in the strip club and stuff like that. I'm not so you know, a lot of people or people keep talking about doing something. They do a burlesque mix with. Uh, 
mixed with stand up, that I wouldn't want to do. I'd want to do actual strippers. I don't like. I'm not a burlesque fan. I like strippers. Um, but um, I've never, I've never had the opportunity to. I'd love to. It'd be a cool show. Have you spent any time in Montreal? Yes, I have. All right. You asking about the festival? Or you asking about the strip club? Well, there's a combination. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there midday for strip clubs, and it was interesting. So, yeah, it's it's one of the only shows in town at 2 p.m. So you have to <laughs> you have to do what you can. <laughs> so the yeah. name of uh, the name of the album, "If These Balls Could Talk," is that right? Yeah, "If These Balls Could Talk" came out today. Congratulations! Thanks, man. What might the balls say if they could talk? You got to listen to the album, man. <laughs> We'll find out. It's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, um, it's just it's it's. I'm real proud of it, man. They they uh, they let me be real hands on with it at Comedy Central Records, so uh, it's exactly the way I wanted it to be. And I'm, I think it's a real solid record or album or whatever you want to call it. It's great. So check it out. 